Many people today are struggling with diabetes, prediabetes, or weight management. And if you're one of them, you probably know the frustration of trying numerous different medications or supplements that ultimately lead to a big disappointment. There are so many options, so many marketing gimmicks, and so much time and money wasted because of that. I'm going to focus on only the best of the best. So here we go. First supplement I want to talk about is berberine. This is one compound classified as an alkaloid. It is normally extracted from the roots, stems, or bark of shrubs called berberis. Berberine promotes glucose uptake to the cells by activating AMPK, also known as adenosine monophosphate kinase. This enzyme is used in the cellular energy system. What makes berberine so great is that it works on multiple different metabolic mechanisms. For one, it decreases insulin resistance. It increases glycolysis, which helps break down sugar within the cells. It decreases sugar production within the liver, and it slows the breakdown of carbohydrates in the gut, which means slower absorption of glucose. Depending on your size and weight, you should take one to two grams of berberine per day. Most of the studies on berberine have shown significant results when the patients have been given at least one gram of berberine daily. This alkaloid is said to work as well as some pharmaceutical drugs and is obviously a much safer route to go. The main mineral I want to focus on is chromium. Chromium plays an essential role in regulating blood glucose because it assists in enhancing the function of insulin. Chromium, like berberine, activates AMPK which regulates metabolism. There are numerous studies concluding that chromium promotes insulin sensitivity. You should take about 60 micrograms per day. That's roughly half of the recommended daily intake. This should be a no-brainer supplement for your diabetic defense arsenal. It's also very inexpensive. And yes, I didn't forget about cinnamon. This is probably the most well-known supplement for combating insulin resistance. But there are still many people that don't know about Ceylon cinnamon. This is considered the true cinnamon. And even though it's not the most common form that's found in the grocery stores, that would be cinnamon cassia. The cassia species is a low quality cinnamon that's very high in Kumarin, which can lead to liver toxicity. Ceylon, on the other hand, is a high quality and highly prized spice. Cinnamon has been shown time after time to have anti-diabetic and blood sugar controlling effects. This is thanks in part to a compound it contains called tannin B1, which exhibits insulin-like biological activities and antioxidant properties. The main rule of thumb with cinnamon is to find the Ceylon type for sure, and then shoot for about 300 micrograms per day, maybe splitting it off into three 100 microgram doses with each meal. And finally, I'm going to touch on a few fat-soluble vitamins that promote insulin sensitivity. These would be the vitamins A, D, and K2. Now, vitamin A increases the activity of insulin receptors within cells. Cells within the pancreas, called beta cells, are responsible for creating insulin. They happen to have a large quantity of cell surface receptors for vitamin A. There is an undeniable correlation between diabetes and a vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin D and K2 work to improve calcium metabolism in the body. This is important because imbalances of calcium are correlated with insulin resistance and abnormal beta cell functioning. Now, it's best to get your vitamin A from animal products, but if you choose to go with a supplement, Go with the retinol form because that's going to have better bioavailability. The vitamin D and K2 that I take personally is right here. They work synergistically, so take them together if you can. I always prefer liposomal sprays over pills for their bioavailability. Uh, since these are fat soluble, they can store up in your body, so be aware of how much you are consuming. Don't megadose these vitamins for any more than one to two days. Um, and it's usually safest just to follow the recommended servings that are on the label. With a solid regimen of taking the berberine, chromium, and Ceylon cinnamon, while also making sure that you're not deficient in these fat-soluble vitamins, 
your chances of reversing insulin resistance are astronomically better. Not only will your blood glucose levels be better regulated, but things like metabolism and cardiovascular health will also get improved. Wouldn't it be nice to enjoy some sweets from time to time and not have to worry about losing your foot? At some point, I will delve into the main causes of diabetes because I think that's also a massively misguided subject. But that's going to be it for this video. Please share with people who you think might benefit from the information that I've provided. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the Supplemental Sense channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay healthy everyone.